Pedrito, man, congratulations, man. 2014, you are having a stellar year. This is the beginning of your official residence here at Sobrosa. You've had a tremendous year, and you also kicked off this year at Jazz at Lincoln Center. How was that? That was amazing, man, you know? Beautiful experience with the great Winton Matsali, great dear friend, and now with the great Chucho Valdez. It was a dream come true. And it was a beautiful, beautiful suite they did. Uh, we did together for for the Orichas, you know. And it was an amazing, it was an amazing concert. People loved it, and we hope we're gonna do it again together. You know, the music was really reflection of the music of your native Cuba, but you also put a contemporary twist to some of the music that you played. Tell me about how you guys got together and kind of envision how that music was going to be because it was really kind of like a suite yeah it was a suite and um well actually uh winton was the one that came out with that idea he came out to me and he said pedro you know i really want to put together a music for richards which is a culture that you practice in cuba and um you know he just came out with the idea and we got together he did his own work i did my homework we we select the, the, the songs together, we put together the arrangements and all that, and it came out beautiful, man. Winton did a great and extraordinary work, and he definitely put that kind of music on another level. Definitely he did something that nobody has did before. He re harmonized all the, the rich chants, and uh, it was a beautiful suite. You also had the wonderful opportunity back in September to open up for the Tedeschi Trucks band at the Beacon. I mean, what was that like? Another um, magical night, man. Actually, um, Derek is a great friend a long time ago. I had the great opportunity to work with that group. And, um, you know, it's, it's beautiful to get together again with him, and especially in this kind of... Theater, you know, Beacon Theater is one of the greatest theater from New York City, and it was great that he gave us the opportunity to work with him again. And uh, I love him, and it was an amazing, an amazing concert. You know, this record that you have, your debut record on Motema Records, this is an album that I love because you are really bringing some very functified you bring in the native music of Cuba, but you are also bringing cats like Winton Marcellus, John Schofield. You got Matt Damon on this, or Matt Dillon on this record. Tell me about the the, the process of recording an album like this. Well, um, Paul Seeger, my manager, and I decided that we would like to put that record in another level and also open up for different audience in terms of the sound of the of the group. And uh, Steve Gadd, which is someone that we decided to be part of, of the production of the record with me, it was a perfect sample because he's someone that really loved the music, he's someone that we've been involved in many projects together. And uh, he learned the music as one of, the, of us and it was very easy for us to to work with him, you know. He already know the whole repertory, what to do, and, and it came out, the result was beautiful and amazing. And and definitely, it's, it's always beautiful to get a collaboration with, with musicians in that type of label. Like, you know, Winton put something in that song, Lengua de Bara, that put the song, make it rich, make that song beautiful. And also, John Scoffey did a great, um, guitar solo on, on Travel Riverside Blues, which is a blues from Robert Johnson. It was amazing, man. It was a great choice. It was, it was the, the perfect choice. You know, the partnership with Steve Gadd, because he's a master at the percussion and drums also, what was some of the things and the insight that he laid upon you as a musician and also as a friend recording this project? Well, actually, you know, a lot of the ideas of, of the very first idea that made the record different was putting a click click and, and, and bringing back to the tempo all the songs, which he said, you know, you should let it breathe more. You should, you know, put some stuff out and in, in and out, some different 
color, you know, like shakers, which is an instrument we don't use in the on the live performing, the cabasa. Some of the instrument he he came out with the idea to put it to, to put it on the record, and, and also you know the way he plays drum, man, you know, it fit perfect. You know, he he's very testful drummer. His his knowledge is incomparable, and um, he's, 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 he's it's a great vibe, you know, he's got a beautiful vibe, he's a great friend and it was very comfortable work with him and and as I tell you before, you know, it, it, it made the record happen. <laughs> Cuba, and I understand by way of your family, your uncle was the one that kind of sparked the flame for you to play yeah. the Congress. Actually, I never met him. You know, when I was born, he, he he was not around. But my mama, you know, my mom showed me so many recording pictures. And when I went to the street to start performing and playing and knowing people, a lot of people talk about him. He was one of the greatest congueros from Cuba. His name was Antonio Campos. And people used to tell him Nico or Watuzi. He got a, he looks like Nike King Cole a lot. So a lot of people used to tell him Nike King. So, you know, it was, it was a beautiful, uh, it was, it was amazing that people used to talk about him very good. And nice and really inspired me to be, you know, to follow his steps. You know, you didn't really go to school to learn the music, so you kind of learned trial and fire. What was it like growing up as a team playing 
the the percussion the way that you're doing and develop the kind of language that you are have matured into as we play now well in cuba back on the states when i was a teenager it was hard to to go to school of music without someone to connect you to with the school so i grew up in a very ghetto neighborhood where the only opportunity to get out of the ghetto was music I learned the street and I'm happy that I did it that way because I learned so many so many rhythms and things in the street that you're never going to learn in the school. And um, it was beautiful. It was a beautiful experience for me. It was hard to learn with with some people in, in Cuba. You know, they, 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 they don't want to teach um, cats in the street or something like that. But, you know, finally I came through that and, and I learned the way. I was supposed to learn. Who were some of the m musical icons or some of the musicians that you were listening to in your native Cuba that kind of lit the fuse for you? Well, so many people in terms of percussion players, you know, we got uh, a lot of recording from Mongo Santa Maria, Armando Peraza, Patato Valdez, Giovanni Hidalgo, Ray Barreto. Those were percussion players, but in terms of groups, believe it or not, Cuba is a country where we have so many influence from American music. I used to learn and listen to a lot of uh, music from Earth, Wind and Fire, Cool and the Gang, Stevie Wonder, Lionel Richie, Donna Summer, um, many groups, man, even rock and roll groups like Zeppelin, ACDC. You know, Cuba have a big influence from American music. So, you know, when I used to be little, I used to listen to all those kind of music and, you know, and absorb them and, and learn from them even. I was in Cuba, you know, and you have to put the radio very soft because Cuba and, and the United States didn't have any kind of relation back in those days, and it was hard to le listen. It was, it was illegal to listen to those kind of music back in those days. You know, a lot of people don't know this about you, but you were the very first winner of the Thelonious Monk competition here in the United States. And by you winning that, that kind of opened Pandora's box for you as a musician. And you got to play with a lot of great musicians over this last decade. Yeah, man. The Lenny's Monk was a great year for me, you know. Actually, I won that prize. I won that contest one day before my birthday. I born September 12th. And that was September 12th. September 11th, 2002. So, uh, the Monk competition opened so many doors for me. You know, I start getting deal with a lot of companies like like Siljan, Symbol, um, Latin Percussion, Remo Head, Big First, Sticks. It was amazing. It was amazing for me. It was a great year for me. You know, I started playing with Paquito Rivera, Brian Lynch, Steve Touré. It was amazing year for me. You know, you were one of the founders of a band called Yobo Buena. And I want to know how different it is fronting the band and also now fronting your own band, doing the type of music that you're doing. There's, there were some comparisons, but also con contrast the types of music styles that you were playing. Definitely, you always learn um, performing and traveling and recording with different groups. You always get some beautiful ideas. And... Um, you're trying to use them in your own way when you do your own group. 
And yeah, but when I was a group that, you know, was a group where I learned a lot, you know, it was like kind of alternative group where they used to mix a lot of different kind of music. Cumbia was rock and, and, and Afro-Cuban music with Boogaloo. So that was a beautiful period of time where I learned a lot in the time of music and production, you know, because Andres Levin, the band leader, was a great producer, very successful producer. And I learned a lot in that area also with him. So, you know, yeah, but when I really, really made me think bigger in terms of music, not just to learn or play in my own group, just for Cuban music, you know, but to experiment different, all, all the di different type of music. You know, one of the things that you do musically is, in addition to paying homage to the music of Cuba, you also bring great African rhythms to what you're doing. How hard and how easy is that when you're bringing this to a whole new form of music listeners as well as fans of the music? Well, you know, um, there's never a guarantee of, of what you do in terms of music because, you know, there's some people that kind of love what you do and some people that kind of say, well, that's, I don't understand what's going on in there. It's just all about, you know, to express yourself, be yourself and, 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 and try to show people the truth, you know, always make sure that they are part of, of you and, 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 and share that, all those emotion and experience with the audience. And, you know, they're gonna, the, 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 the results gonna come out from then, you know, you never know if they're gonna love your music or not, especially when you came from groups, from different type of groups like Paquito, Yerba Buena, Brian, Sting, you know, it's just it's different. You know, they see you as a as a as a side man, and then they see you with your own group. They say, "Wow, oh, this is not what I saw. This, this is not what we thought that it's gonna be, or this is not what we said, what, what 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 we saw on the stage with different groups." So, you bring your own group, your own roots to you to you to your group, and eventually people love it because you're showing people who you are. You know, you're not trying to imitate or copy something else. You're just trying to show people who you really are. Pedrito, you know, we said earlier, man, this is a brand new club, Sabrosa, and the Blue Note Entertainment Group really has dedicated themselves on presenting music to music fans as well as presenting the idiom of Latin music, which you're getting ready to do here at the residency. What are some of the ideas and some of the things that you plan to do here, time permitting, here at Sabrosa? Well, um, we all hope Sobros is going to be one of those clubs like Blue Note, like Latin Quarter, like, uh, you know, biggest clubs where people used to go no matter what, no matter who's playing. So we want to make sure that this place is going to be one of those places that people are going to go often, very often, or normally every day. We're expecting to see this club full of people and we spread this club being all the newspaper with great reviews and uh, yeah that's what we're expecting and uh, also you know we want people to come in here and say wow I had a unforgettable unforgettable night you know I want people to come here have fun have a good time and come back you know 